Good day! Welcome to our lesson for today which is all about the seed and fruit development, form, and function. But before we discuss um, this lesson, let's have a review on our previous lesson about the development of male and female gametophyte. It is very important that we understand or we clearly understand the um, previous lesson because this is connected to our lesson for today. We will start on what we call the megasporogenesis which is a course in the ovule inside the ovary of the pistil. Again, pistil is the female reproductive organ. And then the final product is what we call the embryo sac. And then on the male part, we have what we call the microsporogenesis, occurs in the anther of the stamen. Stamen is the male reproductive organ. And then the final product is what we call the pollen grain. So the male gametophyte, which is the pollen grain, and then the female gametophyte, which is the embryo sac, will later on magpofuse, okay, in the process of the pollination. So again, yung pollination, we have what we call the biotic and abiotic pollinating agent. Okay, so when we are talking about biotic, it can be from birds, butterflies, moths, and etc. And kapag sinasabing abiotic pollinating agent, it can be the water, wind, Okay, that helps the, um, or it, it is the transfer of the pollen grain from the anther to the stigma of a flower. And then later on, we'll have the double fertilization. So, sunod na yung tinatawag natin na seed development and the fruit development. Okay, so now let's start our discussion about the seed and fruit development form and function. Okay, after the double fertilization, each ovule develops into a seed. And the ovary develops into a fruit and closing the seeds. So again, ovule develops into a seed, ovary develops into a fruit. As the embryo develops from the zygote, the seed stockpiles proteins, oils, and starch. It depends on the species. So that's the major reason why seeds consume as part of the healthy diet. And seeds are great sources of fibers and it may contain monounsaturated uh, mono fats or polyunsaturated fats and it also contains important vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants. Then we have what we call the endosperm development. Endosperm usually develops before the embryo does. After the double fertilization, which um, we have what we call the triploid nucleus of the ovule central cell. So the triploid, triploid nucleus is the combination of the two polar nucleus or nuclei with the other sperm. So magdi-divide yon, forming a multinucleate supercell that has a milky consistency. Yung liquid mass na yon, okay, the endosperm becomes multicellular. When cytokinesis partition the cytoplasm by forming membranes between the nuclei. And eventually, these naked cells produces cell walls and the endosperm becomes solid. It's just like buko or neog. Yung ating coconut milk and then the meat is an example of the liquid and solid endosperm. And now, let's talk about the embryo development. The first mitotic division of the zygote is splits the fertilized egg into a basal and terminal cell. The terminal cell eventually gives rise to the most of the embryo, while the basal cell Continues to divide, producing a thread of cells called the suspensor, which um, anchors the embryo to the parent plant and also helps to transfer nutrients to the embryo from the parent plant. And then we have this, um, as the suspensor elongates, it pushes the embryo deeper into a nutritive protector or nutritive and protective tissue. And meanwhile, the terminal cell divides several times to form a pro-embryo, or the early embryo, attached to the suspensor. And then the cotyledons begin to form as bumps of the pro-embryo. In your dicot, dalawa, dalawa yung cotyledons, sa monocot, isa naman. And then, after the rudimentary cotyledons appear, the embryo elongates. And between the two cotyledons, yung makikita na natin dito sa loob ng seed, meron naman tayong tinatawag na embryonic shoot apex and at the opposite end of the embryo's axis where the suspensor attaches, 
ay meron tayong tinatawag na embryonic root apex. So, dito yung shoot. Okay, this is the root. And after the seed germinates, yung ating um, apical meristem and the apexes of the shoots and roots sustain the primary growth. So, that's the development of the embryo in plants. And this is also the another picture of the development of the eudipho embryo. So, as we can see from the flower, okay, we have the endosperm nucleus and the zygote. And then the zygote splits the fertilized egg into a basal and then the terminal cell. So, this is the basal and then the terminal. And then later on, the basal cell continues to divide, okay, producing a suspensor which anchors the embryo. And then we have the embryo that later on the cotyledons begin to form as the bumps of the pro embryo so again sa nangyayari ito sa loob ng seed and now let's discuss the structure of the mature seed okay, so by the way this is the structure of the um, seed of a bean or yung ating seed um, we have what we call the seed coat which is the protective sheet that encloses the embryo and its food supply. This is formed from the integuments of the ovule. And we have what we call the hypocotyl. So, hypo in Greek word is means under. And this is the embryonic axis where the cotyledons are attached. And then we have what we call the epicotyl, which is below the first pair of the leaves. And then we have what we call the Radical, which is the embryonic root that terminates the hypocotyl or, or terminates by hypocotyl. And then we have what we call the cotyledons. As you can see, it is a two cotyledons. We say then dicot. Okay, dicot yung plant natin. And then the cotyledon of the garden bean are packed with starch before the seeds germinates because they, they absorb carbohydrates from the endosperm when the seeds was developing. And the epicotyl, the young leaves, and the shoot apical meristem, pag pinagsama-sama natin yan, ay tinatawag na natin na plumule. Okay, so that's what we call the structure of the mature seed. At pagkumparahin naman natin yung eudicot and then the monocot. So pag um, eudicot or the dicot seed, Two cotyledons kapag monocot, one cotyledon. Kasi nga, mono. Okay, so it's one. So, ito yung kanina natin na pinag-usapan. Tapos, ito naman yung structure nung um, seed from a corn. So, we have the scutellum, cryoptile, plumule, and then the coleoriza. We have also the endosperm and then the radical. So, makikita natin that the scutellum, ibig sabihin kasi ng from Latin word ay small sheet. Okay. Malit na harang. It has a large surface and it is pressed against the endosperm which it absorbs the nutrients during the germination. So, napakalaga nung ating scutellum. Then, we have what we call the coleoptile. This one. Which is the protective sheets that encloses the grass and covers the young shoot. So, this is the cover, nagko cover ng ating mga grass seed. Then we have the coleoriza. This one covers the young root. Both cleoptile and coleoriza penetrates the soil after the germination. Then we have the plumule or the um, combination of the epicotyl young leaves and then the short apical meristem. And then we have also what we call the radical, okay, the embryonic root, and then we have the endosperm. So that's the structure naman ng ating monocot seed which is the corn. At ngayon, meron tayo dito makikita na itong klase ng mga date palm seeds. So ito ay natagpuan sa tatlong archaeological sites sa Judea kung saan natagpuan din yung Dead Sea um, Scroll. Itong mga buto na to ay approximately 2,000 years old kung saan naging dormant sila since the biblical times. But then again, Nagawaan ng paraan ng mga scientists na patubuin itong mga date seeds na to or the date palm seeds at ngayon ay mga date palm plants na kung saan tumutubo na lahat sa 
Southern Israeli Community of Ketura Metosela. So napakahalaga na pag-aralan natin ngayon yung tinatawag na Sid Dormancy. Dahil pag sinasabi natin na Sid Dormancy, during the last stages of its maturation, the seeds dehydrates until its water content is only about 5 to 15 percent of its weight. The embryo, which is surrounded by the food supply, enters dormancy. So pag sinasabi natin na dormancy, the seed stops growing and metabolism nearly ceases. But then again, seed dormancy depends on the type of the plant species. Yung iba kasi, some will germinate in few days and then iba decades or even longer. For example, we have um, seeds that germinates as soon as they are suitable for the environment. Okay, una na dyan yung tinatawag natin na yung ibang seeds na germinate sa desert area. So, kailangan nila ng substantial rainfall. Okay, kailangan ng um, maraming tubig para mas magsimula mag-germinate yung mga seeds. Yung iba namang seeds na kung saan um, natural na yung mga fire forest or mga forest fire, kailangan din nila na naka-adapt din sila sa ganong klase ng environment na kung saan after the forest fire, um, nag-germinate na agad or nabibreak na yung dormancy. Yung iba naman sa winter area, kailangan nila ng extended exposure sa cold para magsimula mag-germinate din yung mga buto. Okay. Meron naman tayong tinatawag na seed germination and development. So, ibig sabihin, the dormancy will stop kapag meron ng available um, environmental okay, factors na makaka para pagganahin na or mangyari yung seed germination. Okay. For example, the enough water, sunlight na kailangan ng seeds. But then again, depends on the maturity of the seed bago siya mag-undergo ng seed germination. Ang reason kung bakit isinusok natin or ibinababad natin yung tubig is because of what we call the um, scratification. Okay, yung scratification, ibig sabihin, dinadamage natin yung seed coat in some way. At ang magandang nakakatulong para dito is yung water. Because water helps to break the seed coat. And kung isusok natin yung seed, Okay, the time na kailangan lang natin is at least 8 to 12 hours or hindi lalagpas ng 24 hours. At kapag ibinabad natin ng sobra yung isang klase ng buto, later on, okay, madadecompose agad siya. And ang dahilan niya doon is to reduce the germination time. Kaya natin isinusok. And then, dito sa germination, nakadepende doon sa tinatawag natin na imbibition or the uptake of water due to the low water potential of the dry seed. And then imbibing water causes the seed to expand and rupture its seed coat. And then it also triggers metabolic changes in the embryo that enable it to resume growth. Following hydration, yung mga enzymes natin will begin to digest the storage materials of the endosperm and the cotyledons. And then the other nutrients are transferred to the growing regions of the embryo. So again, the first organ na lalabas is yung tinatawag natin na radical. And then, or the embryonic root. And then we have what we call the hypocotyl that pushes or the, and growth pushes the hook above the ground. So makikita natin, yung hook form na tumutubo is the hypocotyl. Sa mga eudicots na ngayari to or nakikita natin, okay, mga eudicot seed. And in response to light, yung hypocotyl na yan will later on mag straight in form. Okay, magiging derecho. And then, magsa-separate sila from the cotyledons and then yung mga delicate epicotyl ay makikita rin natin. At doon lalabas yung first true leaves ng ating seed. At kapag nag-expand yung leaves, mag a undergo na to ng tinatawag natin na photosynthesis kung saan gagawa na ng pagkain yung ating plants. And then later on, the cotyledons will fall away from the seedling. So, sinabi natin kanina na seeds are nadadeveloped dun sa ovules while yung ovary of the flower naman ay nadadeveloped into a fruit which protects and enclose the seeds. And when mature, okay, yung dispersal ng mga sa pamamagitan ng wind and animals, okay, nalilipat from another area yung ating mga seeds. And then, the fertilization also triggers hormonal changes that causes the ovary to begin its transformation into a fruit. If a flower has not been pollinated, then the fruit typically does not develop. Kaya napakalaga ng pollination para do sa development ng 
um fruit and then the entire flower usually withers or natutuyo and then nalalaglag during the fruit development yung mga ovary natin ay magiging tinatawag natin na pericarp okay so dito muna tayo sa example natin dito yung pericarp natin binubuo yan ng exocarp mesocarp and then the endocarp the exocarp is the outermost skin or yung nagko-cover din sa ating fruits and then we have what we call the mesocarp or the middle part of the fruit and usually ito yung kinakain natin fleshy and edible and then we have the endocarp or the inner part of the fruit and also the seed so ito ay yung fruit ng avocado so ibig sabihin yung tatlong yan ay tinatawag natin na pericarp the thickened wall of the fruit and as the ovary grows the other parts of the flower usually um shed and then fruits are also classified depende dun sa kanilang types meron kasi tayong tinatawag na the hesens fruit maybe sabihin ng the hesent ito yung mga readily releases yung seeds nila from the environment for example mga peas and then we have what we call in the hesent ito naman yung nagre-rely on the decay para ma-release yung kanilang seeds so for example yung mga peaches okay avocado apple and etc so itong sa pear or peras makikita natin na meron tayong stalk na kung saan ito yung nakakapit from the stem nung um, plant and then we have what we call the hypanthium which is the fleshy and edible part of the pear and we have what we call the core kung saan naman nakalocate yung mga seeds so again depende pa rin sa type of fruit yung um, parts nila Fruits also um, classify depends on their developmental origin or kung saan sila nagsimula. Meron kasi tayo mga fruits na nagderive from single carpel or several fused carpels na tinatawag natin na simple fruit. And we have also simple fruits na dry tulad ng pea pod o yung mga nuts natin. And yung iba naman ay fleshy tulad ng mga nectarine. Meron tayong tinatawag na aggregate fruit kung saan nagmula naman sila doon sa mga single flower. Ibig sabihin, meron silang more than one separate carpel each forming small fruit. Okay, o yung mga tinatawag natin na fruitlet tulad nitong sa lapsberry. And then meron tayong tinatawag na multiple fruit develops from an inflorescence or yung mga group of flowers tightly clustered together. For example, yung ating pineapple. Kapag um, yung walls na yon of many ovaries started to thicken, okay, nag-fuse together and become incorporated into a one fruit. Tulad nga nitong sa pineapple. And then we have what we call the accessory fruit. Okay, yung isang klase pa ng prutas na kung saan naman meron tayong ovary embedded in the receptacle and then the fleshy part of the simple fruit is derived mainly from the enlarged receptacle. So example nga natin dyan is the apple core that develops from the ovary. So, kanina yung pear, example din yun na tinatawag natin na accessory fruit. And bago matapos yung pag-uusap natin ngayon, i-label muna natin yung mga missing part ng ating seed, which is the dicot seed. Sulat nyo yung inyong sagot dun sa ating comment box. And to, and to end our discussion for today, I hope meron tayong natutunan about the seed germination and seedling development and also the parts of a seed the monocot and the dicot and the fruit form and function and always remember science is life and science for all thank you for watching